So hey there fellow YouTubers, it's Frank Bush here again. So just working to expand out my solar generator setup to integrate it in with uh, grid electrical power so that I can toggle between the two. And that way I don't just use this when I'm out in the field, but I can also use it to offset some of my electrical costs when I'm at home. So I have this unit here, I'll, I'll do better camera angles and kind of close up on it and that type of thing. But I have this unit here and I've added this, it's a separate unit with just a couple plugs that I can plug into my solar generator, but this gives me the capacity to go from AC wall power automatically to the solar generator power and back and forth depending on the state of charge and the solar panels production going on with the solar array. So the thinking really is the solar panels I have produce more than enough electricity when there's full sunlight to power my entire living room and to power the battery at the same time. So the battery charges through the day, even if I'm watching television, the battery will still charge through the day. And when the sun goes down and the solar panels stop producing, it'll automatically just start to draw directly from the batteries alone. And when the batteries get down to a certain threshold uh, of capacity within them, it'll automatically switch over to grid power through this unit here. And I'll do a close-up of this to show you exactly the wiring and everything else. But that's really the thinking, is I've got wires that come off and go to the wall. i got wires that go off to the inverter that's part of my solar generator. So the inverter is on and running 24-7 with this setup. And then I've got AC power that comes out. And really this unit switches between them of which, which AC I'm going to be using. So I then have this just plugged in to my television, my Roku, and modem, and those types of things, my other devices. But this switches so rapidly, it doesn't shut them down or anything. I don't have to unplug or replug in anything. You know, I've got this light running off of the solar setup um, as we speak, and just consuming some of the amps. But like I say, I'll switch angles and kind of do a close up on this and then walk through all the different kind of components of exactly how this came together, yeah? So, and then like I say, so this is an AC transfer switch. Hopefully the monitor is picking it up all right, but um, right now I'm currently running off battery power. And when the voltage drops down on my battery, there's some lines that go off and hook onto my battery to tell me what the voltage of the battery is. And simply I can just turn around and say when the voltage drops below in my example because I'm using lithium iron phosphate batteries when I drop below 12.9 volts automatically switch to grid power and when it's filled back up the batteries have filled back up to reach back to a 13.3 volts it'll automatically switch and pull back off of the solar instead the solar and the battery combination instead of off the wall so, but I've got lots of capacity in these batteries and stuff. I can run the DV and all that for hours and hours, but that's in generally speaking what this unit will do. So it's simple controls to adjust things. It's pretty elementary. Now, when it comes to the wires in, so we've got a live and a neutral, a live and a neutral, live and a neutral. So it's only two wires, if you will, from the AC that feed in this comes from the public power so this line here goes off and plugs into the wall and then i've got the output which is this line right here and that just feeds off to the end of an extension cord that i just plug in other extension cords but and then plug in whatever i want off an ac terminal and then i've got this line here and these I've, I've done this one green because, you know, environmentally friendly solar panel generator, blah, blah, blah. But uh, this green line then runs off and goes right out to the inverter that's connected to the battery generator that I built in previous videos. And then I've got my monitor here to show me the capacitance and that kind of thing and where the battery's at, if you will. But uh, like I say, the to, for the wiring and the plugs... I've got, and I've got, sorry, I should mention, these wires were all extension cords that I just bought at the hardware store. And the orange one, I literally just snipped in half and exposed the wires. And when it comes to these extension cord wires, there's a black one, a white one, and a green one. The green one 
I've joined all the green ones together because this is going to go to ground for me. And I've actually plugged it into the ground of the AC socket to ensure that I've got a good solid ground connection. And that way there's no fire hazards or anything else. But I joined, like I said, I had to join all three of the grounds together just to ensure that I had that extra grounding protection because this unit doesn't have built in ground connectors into here. Some other units do, but this one just doesn't. And then I've got two wires coming off here and they just feed along and they connect into the battery generator. I've just got them clipped on to the positive and negative and it just monitors the voltage that the battery's at at any point in time. And that's how it automatically knows what the state of the battery is. So as you can see, fairly simple setup. I've got the one plug plugs into the wall with the male end. I've got another plug plugs into the solar inverter with the male end. And then I've got the female extension that comes off that it just toggles between. So fairly simple, but what this allows really, like I say, and then I've got my solar panels just sitting out in my yard here the we're getting near the end of the day so they're not really producing anymore but uh, so so my devices will cleanly be just pulling off of some power bars that i've got hooked up i do plan on doing something a little better but this was all just kind of improv today was the first day that i got this unit wired up i really wanted to do a video on the actual wiring of this unit but i thought it was fairly explanatory uh, the black like i say is live normally the white is normally neutral and the green is normally a ground line that'll come off. This might be a different color, but the black and the white tend to be the live and the neutral. Then I've got them all just braced in really solid. They're not going anywhere. I've got extra braces here. But the good part about this for me is to keep it as still a mobile solar unit, because I've got this AC transfer switch on its own board and everything, I simply unplug this cord here. I can unplug this cord here and disconnect my battery sensor terminals that are connected to the battery, then I'm back to having just a mobile grid. So it allows me to use these in combination, but it also allows me to easily kind of break off and just take it and go back off grid again. But there you have it. I just wanted to kind of do a quick video. I've got another couple of videos coming out, hopefully in the next couple of days here, where uh, I show some of this. And when it comes to the power of things, the nice part about it is really, like I say, I got my television and stuff, that uh, I'm running all of this, but I don't have to switch them on or off. Nothing has to transfer or anything else. It's all seamless. That uh, this unit will automatically just switch between those two power supplies and keep them all fed through the AC. You can hook up computers even. It's not gonna power off the computer and lose what you're doing or anything else. It's really a seamless unit. But I do wanna have this to be both portable and mobile, and hence the solar suitcases and all that kind of stuff where I can take them and tote them around with me wherever I want. But I also wanna have it where I have the functionality in my house. Like I say, I'm running that light right there. I'm running that off of it as well. Now, I think my entire living room only draws about 15 amps or so. And then when it comes to, I've been watching television. I'd like to say I had the solar panels, had the setup set up since early morning. My battery state of charge is still 74.4%. And it says I can run at the load I'm pulling right now for 45 hours more before I'd have to recharge. Now I'm only pulling 3.3 amps. And that's primarily just running a couple clocks and running my modem and the Roku and that kind of stuff. They draw power regardless. But either way, uh, one of my next videos, like I say, uh, I'm gonna take this unit and bring it out mobile with the solar panels that I've got just sitting out here and set those out in an open field so you can see that I, I don't have to be kind of restricted to being in a set location with them. But uh, yeah, the AC transfer switch was really kind of the next step for me that allows me, like I say, to hybrid between the grid and the solar. And because I can control the thresholds for the upper and lower voltage, I can optimize the power draw that I'm taking off of my lithium iron phosphate batteries, which helps extend their life range even further. I've got it set up right now where I think it's pulling between 80% um, full capacity uh, and down to about 20-25% full capacity, which is ideal for lithium phosphate batteries, you know, lithium iron phosphates. That's, that's, they could get 
close to 10, 15,000 life cycles out of that. And to give you an idea, um, they're rated right now at 4,000 cycles for 80% charge capacity maximum after that. And uh, that's 10 and a half years of daily use, you know? So if I control my voltage uh, on my batteries and make sure that they're seeing ideal charge and discharge conditions, I can definitely extend the cycle life of these batteries and cause them to last far, far longer than I uh, th than than I would normally get if I was 100% charged and then discharge all the way down to zero and fill it up and that kind of thing. And that's one of the added benefits of using one of these AC transfer switches is it really allows me to do more ideal control of my charge and discharge of the batteries. And then it makes it that it's just uh, gentler on the equipment, if you will. So I'll cut it here, but there is more videos coming in the near future. And uh, if you made it this far, thanks for watching. Cheers.